Some libertarians are against the public school system. They would close down the public school system. Do you think this is a good thing, or do you believe in that? Well, I, I don't think the public school system has a real good record. I think the uh, educational quality is very, very low and getting lower all the time. I think that you can go to some of the big cities and you find out that it's, the schools are drug infested and crime infested and there's violence and very little education. More than a million kids drop out a year before they get their high school diploma. It's an armed uh, fortress. and. Uh, so we think the record is very poor, so we have concern about good education. And uh, of course, we want to go in the direction of uh, privatizing all schools. But in the very practical world of politics, uh, I don't think it's wise for me to say that tomorrow we could have private schools. I don't think it's likely to happen. So we can do a whole lot, set our ideals, work toward it, and we could change a whole lot. I think where we really have gone astray, has been in this century where we have gotten in probably in the last 30 or 40 years when we got the federal government involved. And if, if, if local governments have been involved in schools most of our history. And I think if we had the federal government out of it and the state governments and schools were controlled locally, although that wouldn't be perfect libertarianism, it would be a far cry better than what we have. But even short of doing all that, we as libertarians would really promote a little competition. We don't like monopolies when they're government monopolies because that's really the only government, only monopoly you get. But a monopoly over school system is, is a great danger. So we would immediately introduce the idea, and we think it would help the schools right off. And that is allow tax credits or vouchers for people who want prayer in the schools. How can we force people to have prayer in school? You know, that's a violation of civil liberties. But what we could do is say, if you don't like the way your kids are being taught, let's allow you to have competition. Let's give you a tax credit or a voucher and go down the street and have the kind of school you want. So we would want competition. That, to me, would be a practical alternative uh, and moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I guess the most uh, controversial uh, stand which libertarians have now is on drugs. Uh, you probably get uh, a lot of criticism because you want to legalize uh, drugs, right? Well, but I think the most <coughs> controversial thing about the whole drug problem is, is zero tolerance. <laughs> I think that's, that's what's uh, controversial, this idea that we have no privacy. <coughs> There's no financial privacy or privacy in our home because the Drug Enforcement Agency can break our doors down looking for a cigarette butt. Uh, they confiscate cars and boats and houses are bulldozed down all in the name of, uh, of uh, teaching people not to have bad habits. They're spending $10 billion. I think it's a, an incredible program of failure. Uh, so the controversy is really uh, in the hands of the government, Democrats and Republicans who are saying the same thing, and each party tries to outdo the other, and they're absolutely obsessed with this. At the same time, they care not a lit about, you know, our civil liberties. But the drug laws have only been here since 1914. About that time we had the income tax, the Federal Reserve System, the FBI, licensing to protect certain industries and professions. Then we decided we we're going to tell people how to live and what their habits ought to be. That's when they introduced the ideas of prohibition of alcohol. Didn't work very well, and so that was finally repealed. But libertarians detest drug dealers. And that's one reason why we want to get rid of the laws. We want to get the drug dealer out of business overnight because he can't exist unless the drug price is very high. So a lot of good people inadvertently are the allies of the drug dealers if they like the drug laws. The people who write those laws and like those laws inadvertently promote crime. Every drug addict, because he has to pay these exorbitant amounts for their drugs, commit on the average 260 felonies a year to raise the money. That would be totally unnecessary. Who raises that kind of money to go buy a six pack at the drugstore? They don't have to do that because the alcohol is available. And alcohol kills more people than drugs. Cigarettes, they kill 325,000 people a year. And what are we required to do? Subsidize tobacco industry. I mean, if people want to really do good, let's just quit to subsidizing tobacco, get the government out of the sale of alcohol, and and, and go that way. But the crime rate would go down, the drug dealers would be out of business, I think the kids wouldn't be as exposed either. It's pretty hard to tell a kid that's just dropped out of a public school where he was totally bored and he's on the street corner and decides he wants a job and buy a car. Talk him into working at McDonald's for $4 <laughs> an hour when he can make $400 a day doing a little work for the local drug merchant. 
there's no way. He's tempted and he yields to the temptation. So we literally uh, set the stage by these drug laws to get more kids involved. And I think that's horrible. I think the kids have to, they certainly deserve some protection. We deserve at least to create an environment where they're not so uh, likely to be forced into the drug trade. Now you're a medical doctor and you think that legalizing all these drugs would be good. Does the, do your medical colleagues and the medical profession, they agree with this? No, uh, to a minority. Matter of fact, I think that uh, uh, even drugs for uh, treating oneself should be more readily available to people. Uh, not that I think people should do it unwisely and use a lot of fancy medication without some advice, but if drugs were more available, if, you know, if a nurse could prescribe penicillin, it certainly would be a lot cheaper. Nurses are capable of telling you whether you have a strep throat or not. It would drive the cost down. So doctors have a little protectionism involved. They like their little monopoly. So the AMA, yeah. matter of fact, the AMA uh, lobbied me in Washington to vote against even allowing doctors to give heroin for dying cancer patients who couldn't have their pain relieved from morphine. But they were they they did not want this to happen because it didn't want they wanted to have control and they didn't want to look like they were soft on drugs but they want control so whether it's the drugs necessary right now the fda i think is does a horrible disservice to us all by making it very difficult for aids and cancer patients to do alternative treatments yes. you know they're smuggling drugs from mexico you know we think of mexico as a socialist state and yet they can get drugs more readily there and we're having dying cancer patients aid patients smuggling drugs up into the free United States in order for them to take this medicine but the FDA argues well we got to make sure it's safe and effective well if somebody's dying don't you think they have the right to take a chance on a drug on an experimental drug but the AMA isn't helpful in here and the medical profession is very poor a lot of doctors would agree with me but I think they like the idea that they're sort of godlike and they get to write prescriptions and they certainly uh, think that uh, opening up uh, uh, this whole uh, barrel, so to speak, would be detrimental to their protection and their uh, their interest in organized medicine. What about the police uh, and law enforcement profession? Would they be for your point of view? It would put a lot of them out of work. <laughs> I think uh, a lot of them would make a lot less money. You know, it's it, it, their system has been corrupted by. Oh it. gosh, it's you terrible. Know, it's uh, you know another example of how foolish some of these laws are is. They, the prisons are running rampant with drugs. If we can't keep drugs out of the prison, how are we going to keep drugs off the street? Which means it's a very, a very much a corrupting influence. I mean, we, we read stories. I'm sure the majority of the police are not involved, but you don't need very many to really make a lot of money off mm -hmm. it. So there are going to be some officials uh, who would agree with us, uh, and I've had some. I had, a, there was an interesting story of an individual when my staff went to work for a candidate who was running for a, a governorship in a large city. And they brought all the district attorneys together because crime was the number one issue in that state. And they made them, uh, they said that uh, the only way you could ever get rid of crime would be, and they all agreed on this, is you'd have to get rid of the drug law. So behind closed door without the press, they agreed the drug laws created a crime. And you know what they said? You can't ever achieve that because there are too many people on the take. Too many judges and too many policemen <laughs> like this. So just forget about it. We can't deal with it. And it's too much of an emotional issue anyway. But it is an important issue. I think the discussion has progressed a whole lot in the last six months. I think we as libertarians have done a whole lot of good in getting this discussion out. And I am going to continue to debate this because as a parent of five children and as a physician and as a non-drug user, I think that I uh, have some credibility in, in making this uh, debate uh, on the idea that drugs ought to be decriminalized.